Has it been nearly four weeks? I think it has. It's been nearly four weeks, hasn't it? Hello! Back from my holiday. And even more important than that, we have a birthday to celebrate this afternoon, boys and girls. Yes, it's a birthday. Guess whose birthday it is? Have you any idea? Let me look through my list. Is it, is it, is it, is it Suko in New York? No. Is it, is it Tom in, 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 in Chicago? No. Is it, um, is it Richard in London? No, it's not Richard. Guess whose birthday it is? Mine! Oh yes. Birthday time, boys and girls. Happy birthday. time boys and girls and uh, you know it's very I only get to do this once a year but cards cards have flooded in boys and girls the three cards have flooded in here to the United Kingdom radio talk studios I'm pleased to say cards have flooded in so I shall read those out first of all today um, by the way, um, while I've been away, of course, uh, to Australia, uh, I'll be telling you a little bit about that later on. Um, but I also, someone asked me to get something for them. Let me just get it. And I do have it here in front of me. Carl in Yorkshire apparently collects TV magazines from around the world, which is, which is great, you know. All sorts of people collect different things. Have you ever collected anything? I used to do stamps as a child, but I didn't do it very well, you know, with sort of bits of sellotape rather than those special um, little stamp hinges. Does anyone else ever collect stamps? You know those stamp hinges? They never seem to stick properly, did they? Did you notice that? You always lick one end and, and they'd go in the book, but often, you know, a while later, a couple of months later, you'd be flicking through the pages and all these stamps would suddenly fly out of the book at you because these things didn't stick properly. What were they? Stanley Gibbons stamp hinges. Oh no, sellotape was a lot, lot better, but unfortunately, completely and <laughs> totally uh, makes the stamps valueless afterwards because you've stuck them into the book. Uh, good morning to Zach in Australia in Orange, who I didn't manage to meet because it's actually a little bit further than I thought he was um, <clears throat> while I was over there I did intend to uh, visit um, but I left it quite late until the sort of very last day of the holiday I was going to go out and see him when I told my cousins where he lived he's, he said oh are you staying there for a couple of days then I said no and it's a blooming long trip it was not it's not an hour and a half as I thought apparently it's a good day's trip and really they were telling me if well if you're going over there you want a hotel to stay the night and then come back the next day because it's quite a long journey which I didn't realize anyway um Carl in Yorkshire asked me for a uh, TV magazine, so I've got that for you, Carl, and you need to send me your address and I'll send it off you. It's got all the programmes in Australian channels, it's ABC One, SBS, uh, SBS, uh, a channel in Australia where they have the most fantastic newscast that you could ever come across in your life called Lee Chow something, well, I can't think of her name now, hang on, let me, just, let me find that for you. I've, I've spoken about her before, um, I think she's Chinese, SBS News Reader, and I'll find her name for you. What's her name then? SPS Chinese. No, I can't find it now. But it's it's Li Qingming or something like that, and she's she's wonderful, wonderful. She's got this great big hairdos like this, and collars coming up. Channel Seven Nine Fox. Fox Television, Fox, F-O-X, and all those, all right? So there you go, Carl. It's all here for you. Your TV Week Australia, OK? Put that over there. Right, let me read some of these birthday cards out, which uh, lovely, kind, kind people have sent in to me. Uh, first of all, from Kath, and she sends a card in with a picture of the most beautiful cat you have seen in your entire life, apart from my own cat, of course. Oh, by the way, I've got two other cats living here at the moment. Yes, uh, my best friend Ron has been staying while I've been away and I've had a few rooms decorated and I'm very, very pleased with uh, with uh, with what I've come back to, to be honest. Very pleased indeed. And he's also got two cats. Now, there was one. Let me see if it's here. There was one outside the door. Are you here, cat? 
No, it's not there now. What a shame. There was a cat there earlier. It's got two of the most gorgeous ginger cats, and they're both boys. Um, uh, but they're so big. <coughs> they're only about six months old, and they're already bigger than my female cat. Great big paws they've got, and they're very, very nice and friendly. So nice to have some more cats in the house. Uh, so first of all, from Kath, and as I say, it's a pink card with a picture of a cat asleep on a, I think, on a pillow. Or something very fluffy anyway. And it says, Hi Chris, hope this card finds you well. Hope you have a lovely birthday. Regards from Kath. So thank you for that. Thank you for that, Kath. That's a beautiful card, that is. Little cat there. Thank you. Uh, another one here. Let's see who this is from. I like to open these. Anything that you send into the show is always opened on air. Do you know what I mean? I like to do that. I'll give you the address in a second if you want to send anything else in, all right? Uh, please don't send money, because it's, it's embarrassing when people start sending money. I'm not a Red Cross parcel service. I am not yet a registered charity. Be please believe me, I will let you know if I ever become a registered charity. Oh, it's another one from Kath. One second. Oh, this is about the holiday. Now, on this particular card, she sent a picture... Looks like the countryside. It's a bit. It's actually the picture's a bit dim. Actually, it looks, but it looks very wintry and white in this uh, particular picture. And she says, "Hi, Chris. Hope you had a lovely holiday. Sending a winter scene to remind you of what you have missed. Uh, to let me tell you this. One thing I didn't miss was the cold weather. Anyway, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, it's been so quiet for the last month. I missed your chatter, and I've missed you." What do you mean you miss my chatter? I hardly say a word, Kath. I barely say a word. Don't I? Hardly say a word. That's me, Kath. You know, quiet as a mouse, my dear. Have you done any recordings of your visit this time? Uh, no. I didn't take the camera and I didn't take the sound recording um, because I, I did that last time. Um, but there were times, I have to admit, that I thought to myself, do you know what? I wish I'd bought the camera and the recording equipment. Can I just close this door because it's it's banging? Just a minute now. Is that other cat here? Cat, where are you? No, he's not here. I thought the other cat because it likes coming in the office. The other cats. Um, if you're wondering about the asthma, well, um, I'm putting up with it at the moment because it's not too bad. Okay. Um, Yes, she says, the recordings you made last year were lovely and very well made. I'm glad you enjoyed them. I still watch them from time to time. You're lucky to visit such a tranquil setting. And that's uh, regards from Kath. And I know what you mean by the tranquil setting. You are, of course, talking about Norfolk Island, where I spent... Did you holler your hibis? Hello. Hello. Look, it's my best friend, Ron. Come in and show your little face. There we are. No, come in. Come in. Come into the light, Mary Ann. There we are. Hello. And lean down a bit so that they can... No, you know, they're not yeah, allowed don't, to see Don't Come me. on, put your head down there. There we are. There he is. It's my best friend, Ron. He's, he's just appeared in the studio and he's made me... A, are you going now? Yeah, I've made you tea. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. I just wonder where the, one of the ginger cats was. Um, they're downstairs with me. Would you like to see one? Yes. Just a moment. Will, will, it pick, will it allow you to pick it up? Have you got a net? A net? And a, and a, and what, a hair net? What do you want a net for? To catch the cat. You can't pick a cat in a net, can you? That's of course you can. That's for fish. He wants to move his fish in here as well, incidentally. Oh, there's oh it's all coming here. We're opening, we're opening a zoo. We're yeah. actually opening a zoo. Dr. Doolittle. We've got cats, fish, and of course a dog. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he wants to buy now a mancoon cat. Now, this is a massive, massive thing, a mancoon cat. That's my best friend, Ron. I've got to tell you, I did go out with him years ago, 20 years ago. I used to go out with him. Honestly, he goes out with someone I'm much younger now. It's shocking. His boyfriend is 23. 23? He's 37. I know. I know. It's shocking, isn't it? Absolutely shocking. Anyway, uh, another little, little card here. Now, who's this from? Oh, how beautiful. It's, it's a card from Poland. From regular uh, listener and contributor to the show is Thomas. Hello, Thomas. And this particular card has a picture of lots of chocolates on it. Lots of chocolates. And you know I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. I have got a sweet tooth. And the chocolates are there. Unfortunately, you, you know, not edible on the picture. And um, there's a little... There's noises coming from outside the door. Yes? 
Have you brought a cat in? Hello, darling. Bribery. Come on, come Bribery on. What's this one's time. name? This is Louis. Louis the cat is here. Let Wait me try. Time. Let me try and get him for you. That's Louis the cat. Right, I'll get him in. Louis. Okay. I'll read this. And it says, I w can you do that quietly? I'm trying to do my programme here. It says, I wish you a happy birthday and many happy years on your second half of life. Second half of life? What do you mean? Winter. And Winter what, of your life. What a, will you shut up while I'm, I'm trying to do my programme here? Um, uh, and um, second half of life. Just a minute, what makes you think I've had the first half of it? Oh, my God. So I'm going to die at, what is it, 48, it's 96... Is that going to make me 96? How do you know I've had half my life? Are you doing tarot cards? Oh, I don't... I hate that. Isn't that an awful thought that you may well have lived now half of your life? Poor old Zach in Australia. He probably thinks he's not lived even a tenth of his life yet at 18 years. Are you 18 or 17? I can't remember how old you are now. It says, uh, it takes a... a man to suffer I ignorance and smile. Oh, I've been suffering ignorance for years. I mean, this one... Oh, he's brought the cat in. Give me the cat. What's this one's name? That's Louis. Well, I've got a lovely ginger cat with me called Louis. Now, he doesn't always like being picked up. But this morning, he started picking me up. Now, those of you listening, let me just tell you. He's the most beautiful ginger thing. He's quite big. How old? Six months. And he's only six months old so far. Isn't he? No, he wants to go down now. Go on, off we go. He he's beautiful. Yeah, he's st is he staying on or is he getting off? I think he's falling. Just a minute. There you go. Go on. Down you go. Never ever force a cat to stay with you because the, I don't want one of those treats. What are they? Let me have a look at these. Dreams. <laughs> Why is it all cat treats really stink? Do you remember that one you bought me the other day? What, the whole oh, packet they were go, awful. What, the whole packet that you Oh, gave, they so stank. You were supposed to give her one a day and you gave her a whole packet of 24. <laughs> He bought these treats and his cats didn't like them, so I thought I'd try them out on my cat and she liked them, so I just put the whole lot of them in the in the thing. And she, they really stank of fish. Thank you, goodbye. It was, are you going now? Thank you. You don't have to go out like the cat. Is he staying in here? Come on. He can stay in here if he wants, I don't mind. I'm not having too much of a problem with breathing. What was I saying? Oh yeah, and I put all these treats down for the cat. Her breath stank afterwards. Really fishy and horrible. It's awful. Anyway, where's that card gone? There it is. Just a minute. Let's go back to Thomas's card. Um, he says, It takes a man to suffer ignorance and smile. Be yourself no matter what they say, Thomas. Oh, I am myself, dear. Don't worry about that. I've no intention of changing for anyone. P.S. I've had to put £20 note in here, but I've already glued the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing about getting older. I mean, it's my 48th birthday today, actually. And the one thing about getting older, you get past a certain age, and you know that money, I bet, I bet, I bet Zach in Australia gets like 20 or $30 put in an envelope still. You know what I mean? Those, those, those notes seem to dry up when you get to about 30. No more money in envelopes. It's very, very disappointing. However, <laughs> if you... <laughs> if you want to send any in as a sort of belated birthday question, present, I'm now going to give you the postal address, OK? If you ever want to send anything in, please send it to Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, rg 42 9 ED United Kingdom. All right? Once again, Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, PO Box 4073, Bracknell, RG42 9 ED United Kingdom. And that will get to me here in the studio. So it's been a, a quiet birthday. You know, nothing much. Uh, but uh, we've just been out. He just took us out to a carvery, which was very nice. Very, very nice, that carvery. I had a bit of roast beef, some roast potatoes, and to be honest, I can barely move it, which is not good news, really, anyway, because I have put a tiny bit of weight on. Since being on holiday, I have put on, ling, two pounds. That's not bad, is it? Two pounds, and I know where most of that came from. A couple of messages coming in at the moment. Uh, we have Skype. If you want to join in, in Sky on Skype and you're with us live, just check your clock, um, whether you're listening. You don't know if you're listening live or watching a recording. If it's now coming up to 20 past three... 
on Saturday, the 5th of February, 2011, UK time, then you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live by Skype. Our Skype username is all one word, United Kingdom Radio. OK, United Kingdom Radio. You can join in by Skype, either by tapping a message or indeed calling into the show. We can take calls as well. Right? Don't be shy. Skype username, United Kingdom Radio. There's also a phone-in number. The phone-in number is a local London number, 020-3287-1488. 020-3287-1488. OK, feel free to use the Skype and join in. Uh, Phil is in Hoddesdon, Hertfordshire. Hello, Phil, who says, Good day, how's your billabong? Uh, billab billabong shorts. They are board shorts. Incidentally, board shorts, not a good thing for middle-aged people with fat bellies to wear. Please don't wear... I always... You always see... <laughs> you always see it's like Speedos, isn't it? The only people you ever see wearing Speedos are fat, balding, middle-aged men. You don't get any of the fit ones wearing these things. And billabong shorts only to be wear by youngish, sort of under-30-year-old fit lads. Okay. If you're my age, you can't wear these things. Just accept it and move. I, I've accepted this now, OK? I have accepted I'm a little bit older. I get all my friends tell them, oh, no, no, don't be like that. Once you accept it, you're actually a lot happier. Trying to fit in with this young boy thing, it's not, it's just not happening anymore, OK? It's not happening. It really isn't. And indeed, while I was on Australia, I didn't go to clubs or anything like that. I went to one, um, but I didn't go to clubs or, or much like that at all. Um, uh, the best times I had while I was away was with my uh, cousin's children. You know, and they're very young, like four, five, six years old. I'll tell you all about it during the show. What's the time? 21 minutes past uh, two. OK. Um, yeah, Phil as well. He says, that's me out then. Yeah, Phil, don't, please... Don't go to the seaside in a pair of tight trunks or boardies, as they're known, OK? Don't wear a pair of board shorts. You know you know what they are, don't you? You know when you watch the surfers and they've got those shorts on? OK, well, let me tell you, you know the top of the short, it is not elastic, all right? So if you're, if you're anything like a tiny bit overweight, it will really show and it will cut in. It's not worth it. Wear, dress for comfort, mate, and be done with it, OK? Don't. <laughs> Dress with comfort and be done with it. Um, let's see. Uh, Zach in Orange, Australia says, um, 18 and I think life has only just begun. Yes, it has. Let me tell you, Zach. OK, you're 18, right? I hated my teenage years. I also wasn't keen on my 20s. My best period of my life so far, OK, was between 31 or 32, let me see, 32 and 42. Seriously, the best period of my life was between 32 and 42. That's true. All right, so you've got a little bit more waiting to do. You're 18 now, so, you know, that's it. He says, um, how much, and do you do Australian currency? Yes, I do. I've still got some money left. One moment. Let me see here. Here it is. I actually did very well with my money. Believe it or not, in three weeks, I didn't even spend a thousand pounds. Okay, because I'm quite good with money. I've I've got left a ten dollar note and a five dollar note. Not a lot, an awful lot you can do with that. With a five dollar one, you could just about afford half a subway sandwich, couldn't you, eh? And Australian money is not made out of paper. Look, you can't actually rip it, right? You can I'm. Um, Trying to rip this, you cannot rip Australian money with, with any sort of ease. Look, doesn't rip. It's made out of some sort of plastic. This is true. I'm not not lying to you now. Australian money is not made out of plastic uh, uh, paper. It's made out of plastic, and you can't rip it. It lasts for ages. And the other thing is, it doesn't really crease. Very strange. But one thing it does do: if you put it in the microwave, it will shrink. If you uh, seriously go and try that, Zach, you probably know already about that. Put Australian money in the microwave, it will shrink and then become valueless. Okay, so just be warned about that. All right, um, let's see another couple of messages. Hello to Chris, is that young Chris? Hello, Chris. He says, Happy birthday, babe. Thank you, Chris. I'm still waiting for my date, incidentally, Chris. 
I know I haven't been very forward when you used to come up to me in a DJ box. But I would like a date at some point if you like fat, balding, middle-aged men. I mean, I, I wouldn't, maybe I'm not fat. Bit overweight. I'm about a stone overweight. OK, Chris. Chris, uh, he says, happy birthday. What do you want me to bring you back from America? Yourself. OK, we'll have a date. Can we have that? Thank you, Chris. He says, I'm in... How old are you, by the way? Oh, let me have a quick look. No, you're in your 30s, isn't you? That, that'd be all right. He says, um, what do you want me to bring you back from America? Nothing yourself. I'm in Chicago this month. Oh, uh, well, you probably don't know this, Chris, but the guy after me is in Chicago as well. Tom Harris. He's in the same club as us. Tom Harris is with you live from Chicago just after me in uh, just after ha uh, over half an hour's time. OK, I'm in Chicago this month. I'm going to Vegas at the end of the month. Now, Vegas, there is somewhere I'd like to get. Well, not for the gambling. You see, one of my favorite performers is in Vegas, Barry Manilow. Don't laugh, please. I have tickets for the Barry Manilow concert here. OK, we are going to see Barry Manilow on. Hang on, when was it? Friday, the 6th of May this year. I have tickets for the O2, but he also does um, one of the hotels in Las Vegas somewhere. I'd love to go and see him. Absolutely love to go and see him. Oh, you're Pisces. Well, I'm Aquarius. Is that a good match, Chris? And he's going to be 33 on February the 27th. There, that's all right, Chris. As long as you don't mind someone about 15 years older, i.e. me. Would that be OK? <laughs> nice to hear from you, sir. Yes. Well, that's good to me, then. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Who's a chicken hawk? What's a chicken hawk? <laughs> Zach says, I haven't tried that yet, but I will uh, w wait at least till I get a five to try. Yeah, don't put any more than a five dollar note, incidentally. And actually, do you want us to do that now? Ron! Ron, hey! One minute. I'll tell you what, I've got a five dollar note here, okay? I'll get him to put it in the microwave and we'll see if this works. Ron, hey! Can you put this $5 note in the microwave for me? Because I heard, right, this is Australian. See, try and tear that. Australian money. No, no, it's Go got, on, try. It's, it's got a rubber thing. It's plastic, isn't yeah, it? It's rubber. It's rubber. Some sort of plastic. Now, they tell me that you can, if you put these in a microwave, it will shrink. So put that in the microwave and see if you can shrink it. If it starts sparking, turn 20, it off. 20 though. minutes? Well, you can't because it has metal there. Where's the metal? Is that metal? Is that metal or is that... No, it's see through. No, it's not. Um, no, just put it in there and watch it. See if it shrinks. If it shrinks, because I've got nothing better to do, have I? No, you haven't. Thank you. Is that All right, so we're just leaving the chimneys in the west wing. Well, I don't know. Don't know, mate. All right, so we'll just try and do that for you. We'll see if we can um, make a, a $5 note smaller in a microwave. I don't actually have a microwave in the studio, I'm afraid. Simon Steele on the Isle of Wight. Have you got a microwave there? Yes, we have. Yes. Good morning, Simon. Good afternoon, Ian. Nice to hear you. It's been a long time, mate. It has. You know, Saturday afternoons just hasn't been the same. It's got to three o'clock and I've been tapping my fingers and thinking there's something missing. I think, oh, no, he's missing. It's Chris. He's standing on his head down under. Yes, it is. No, I'm, I'm not standing on my head. I'm back here in the United Kingdom. And do you know what, um, Simon? I, I, I had a nice time there. Um, I go on these holidays to meet my family, really. Um, and when I'm not, when I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, when I'm not doing a family thing, when I'm not getting on a train to go and see family or friends, because I've got quite a few friends in Australia now, I tend to get bored because I don't like doing the tourist thing. I mean, these mad, mad people, you know that big bridge they've got in the Sydney Harbour? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. People climb up that. I mean, what's all well that about? Please. Oh, no, I wouldn't be, be a great lover of that. <laughs> you want to see them. They have to wear these boiler suits, and they're hooked on to the side of the bridge, and it's ever so high. I mean, the thing might fall down, mightn't it? Oh, well, yeah, you never know, do you? Cool, oh, yeah. No, not a great one for heights. No, I mean, not my cup of tea at all to do something like that, I'm afraid. Climbing up bridges or anything like that. Dear me. Oprah no, was I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm watching you know, your video, and I've, I've got a burning question I've got to ask you. Yes, mate. Why are you wearing a tea towel as a shirt? You get it from Australia. It, it, this is not a tea towel. How <laughs> dare you? This I bought this at the airport on the way back because I had some money left over, and I bought one for me, one for my best mate, and one for his other half. And oh, um, right. this is a Ralph Lauren shirt. Tea there, towel. 
Sure it's not, sure it's not a Ralph Lauren. See, oh, it, it was quite funny actually. In this Ralph Lauren shop, this is in Sydney Airport. It was this, they had this little. Here, here he comes. Let's see if this has shrunk. Here, Ron. <laughs> oh, it's Ron Shrump. <laughs> no, not, no. We, we're, we're trying to shrink a. Um, yes, did it work? No, it's the smell of burning. Oh. <laughs> oh, it didn't. Oh, hang on a minute. Has that shrunk? Yes, it has. Look. Is it the same? By about. Three oh, it's only shrunk a little bit, hasn't it? By about three millimetres, and it but was it, in it looks... 40 seconds. OK, well, it's shrunk by about three millimetres. If I, I've got it against the $10 one... Is it the same size as the $10? So that would probably go smaller. Do you know what this bloke just said on the phone? He's on here now. He's on here now. He said, this looks like a tea towel. Well, obviously, he doesn't know who it's made of. Very fetching tea towel, though. What? Very fetching tea towel. It's a Look Ralph Lauren like shirt! <laughs> How dare you! Anyway, what do you want? Ralph Lauren. Well, Ralph what? Ralph Lochen. That's, That's all right, just have a conversation. Just pretend I'm not here. It's all right. <laughs> what uh, are you wearing, then? Yeah, what are you wearing? What am I wearing? Uh, I'm wearing a blue fleece. That's boring, isn't it? A blue fle fleece? Oh, they're terrible. Trouble is with those things, you know, especially in, co in cold weather, you go and touch something metal and you get electrocuted. Yeah, it's cold here. It's quite oh, windy I, on the Isle of Wight today. We're, I, we're, we're no, I stopped, the wear, the coast. I oh. stopped wearing those because I found I was getting electric shocks all the time. Is there anything else you oh, want dear. To? You don't want any of that, do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, just go and clean the chimney, will you, or something, for Christ's sake. Here, they here, stopped, here, they stopped that on the Isle of Wight years ago for setting people up chimneys. I know. Anyway, in, this, in the airport in Sydney, when I was in this, this shop, a little Chinese lady in there, oh, she was ever so nice, um, also in this, in this shop was this bloke, an uh, English bloke, wasn't dressed too smartly. <laughs> Clearly it was someone who had a lot of money. But he, was, he spoke to her like dirt. And you don't need to do that, do you? No. You know, just because she was working in a shop, there was no please, no thank you. Just talk to her. You know, I, 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 he wasn't rude, but I just thought, you know, where's the please and the thank yous here and all that? And there was none of it. None of it. So I was a bit, dis you know, disappointed with that. Um, but so I looked for these shirts and um, uh, she, this little Chinese lady, she saw, oh, she was ever so nice. She, and she kept laughing. She kept <laughs> laughing and smiling, and she said, "Ah, oh, with, with a Chinese accent, which I, I just adore accents. Um, I think the Liverpool accent is very, very nice. You know the Liverpool accent? Mm, yeah. I quite like that one. But, uh, and she says to me, oh, are you English? And I said, yes. Oh, I like English accent. It's very sexy. So I quickly left, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the fight was on, did it? <laughs> 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 before she got any ideas but she was like you know yeah i could tell that she fancied me because her little eyes had lit up she probably thought she was going to get a passport into the uk or something i don't know <laughs> uh, she's on a sticky wicket there then <laughs> oh she was lovely no she was lovely that lady in there but it was just and i thought you know you don't need to be rude to people just you know work in a shop i mean that's not it's not a you know to me there are no jobs that are low down okay you know what nah, I, mean? nah, nah, I don't care right. what someone does. If you've got a job, it's a job. That's it. I don't care what it is. There are no jobs. I, I, you know, I mean, for example, you know what I do. I'm a DJ and I do karaoke. Now, yeah. I get a lot more money than a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me ask you, who does the more important job? Wow, well, there you go. That's exactly right. the nurse. You know, and you know, no jobs are, are are low down as far as I'm concerned. If you've got a job, you've got a job, and that's it. And there's no no need to talk to people like that, Simon. There's been, <laughs> there's been something on BBC Two while you've been away. That that um, well, I suppose he's a celebrity chef in a way. That Mike, that that Michael or Michelle, or whatever he pronounced. Oh, he's you're not with. you're not watching those blooming cookery programs, are you? No, no, no. It's it's a, it's a funny program. It's it's about sort of um. Like service, you know, about being a waiter or waitresses, but obviously at a very high, very high level. And that's quite interesting. You know, oh, the man. amount of money they get paid, if you're any good at it, and you go into the real posh restaurants and travel the world, yeah. you, you, they reckon there's, what is it, the sommeliers, the wine waiters, can earn up to 50 grand a year. That would do me for throwing, throwing a few wine bottles about. I'm in the wrong trade. Is that all? Is that how much they earn? Yeah, you've got to be pretty much at the top of your game, you know, is, to is get that, that amount that... of money. Is that wages, or would that be tips as well, I would have thought? Pro probably tips as well, I expect. But okay. uh, that, that's not bad for being a wine waiter. Not that there's anything wrong with being a wine waiter, as you say, but... Um, no, that, that's very... Fair, I mean, that would that's, do me. That's very good indeed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, not wow. bad at all. 
It, it's, it's been a, it's, since you've been away, it's been a very sad time in Ventnor on the Isle of Wight, though. Why is that then? Well, we've more or less lost our seaside theatre. There's some. Um, oh, great no, band. have you? Yeah, there's a great band of people trying to um, sort of resurrect it, but the, the, the several councils, both the the main council and the town council have been trying to run it and made... Um, they've got no... They've, they've, they can't do... They've got no money to do it now, mate. No, <coughs> no, excuse me. That's that's the... Um, well, that's the trouble. But it's a shame because it's a beautiful little landmark right at the top of ours. You drop down onto our seafront and um, it's yet, yet another live venue that's closed. It's a shame, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is a shame. But you see, the point is people don't go. and You know, if they had packed houses all the time... You know, it has to be said, it wouldn't be closing, I suppose. No, uh, that's the trouble, isn't it? It's, it I, I mean, I remember when my mum was alive. I mean, when I was sort of even 13, 14, which wasn't Long a million. Long time ago. Yes, thank you, daughter. Don't you just love your children? <laughs> um, How old are you, Simon? I, I, me, I'm 45. Oh, you're a bit younger than me then, yeah? Yes. Yes, yeah. Mom, you don't Only look, just. You don't look a day over 50, Chris, so you're not doing bad. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks very much. Is that your little girl there? Yeah, it's I'm not, not little. lots of little now. Of course you're little. Of course you're little. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying before I was really interrupted? Oh, that's right. I, re- I remember down the, uh, just along the coast from me at, uh, in Sandown. Yeah, I used to have, um, show me age now, but Jimmy Tarbuck and Little and Large and those those variety sort of shows. Yeah. Packed them in for about six weeks, you know, when the kids were off holiday and it was yeah. high season. You used to absolutely pack them in. Really? Yeah, yeah. For for starters, now I, I would struggle to think of who you could get of that sort of genre to who's about to do that. And secondly, you just wouldn't get people in, would it? People people would go out for a uh, meal in the pub well, with the fans instead, wouldn't they? Yeah, I don't think so. You know, quite honestly, I mean, the shows and that in London still do well, and yet the tickets are quite. You know, you won't you 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 won't find many. Tickets, I don't think, for less than about sort of sixty quid. If you go and see a show in London, um, and they're packed, but it seems to be only Central London that can do it now. You know? Yeah, and I think obviously London has such a huge catchment area, doesn't yeah. it, from the Midlands and the the South East. It, you know, a lot of people will are prepared to like perhaps travel and drive back, or even sort of make a weekend of it, or what have you, to. Um, to, to sort of stay the night, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's an enormous shame. Can I just give uh, the email address? Anybody who wants to join in by email, if you're watching or listening to a recording of this show, the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, have you ever been abroad anywhere, Simon, or your family or whatever? Now, I've been to Germany, strangely enough. It's, it's the only place um, abroad I've been to. I've got... Uh, Got a bit of um, got a bit of sort of German blood in me. My granddad was German. Okay. So uh, I went with a local social club I belonged to, and that that, that was a good laugh. Did you how go long, on? Um, how long ago was that? Oh, blimey, that's before should I was born. So it's got to be uh, obviously about fifteen years ago. But uh, was that, that a, was a coach, great laugh? Was that a coach thing or, or what? Yeah, it was a coach door to door. Couldn't say. Yeah, uh, do you know those, those? If you can sit on a coach for a long time, those coach holidays are are, are fairly cheap, aren't they? They are, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think the I went twice, and I think the first one I done was um, um, about forty nine pound. I think leaving on the all? Saturday, well, travelling on the Saturday, you had Sunday there and Monday back. Yeah, a lot I mean, of family. You, but if you want to do the Euro Disney, we often see adverts in the uh, local paper here um, advertising Euro Disney coach holidays, and they're they're, they're, they're not very dear at all, really. <clears throat> no, no, it's quite good. It's quite good value, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I must go. All right, Simon, nice, nice to, talk to talk to you, sir. Thanks for calling in. And it's nice that you're back. I well, hope you had a good time. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. See you, man. Bye. Bye, Shania. Bye. There we are, Simon and his family there uh, on the Isle of Wight. Nice to talk to people in other places. Don't forget the Skype uh, call-in is United Kingdom Radio. Oh, it's, it's calling again. Have you called back accidentally? I think you have, yeah. You must must hit the wrong button then, I think. Wrong button there. Uh, United Kingdom Radio is the Skype in uh, name, OK? United Kingdom Radio. Or indeed, you can call in 020 3287 1488. Just looking at the time there. A uh, couple of emails come in then. Uh, first of all, from Nick. Hello, Nick. 
who wrote this actually on the 15th of uh, January. Oh, it's Christopher. Just a minute. Christopher in Chicago. Good afternoon, Christopher. Hello. Hello. All right. Um, very good. How are you? Christopher in Chicago. You know that the guy after us, after me is in Chicago. Did you know that? No, uh -uh. As it was saying, Tom. Now, you need to turn off my audio stream while you're talking to me on Skype, all right? Is that better? I could still hear myself. You know how you're listening to me on the radio? Any better? Is that better? Well, yeah, just about, I suppose. We can put up with that, Chris. That's right, yeah. What's the weather like there at the moment then, mate? How do I turn the audio stream up on the website? Okay, uh, close that. Uh, close snowy. The web, yeah, close the website and it'll stop. How do I turn the audio stream up on the website? Okay, um, close that. Done that? Snowy. Yeah, close the website and it'll stop. Done okay, it? is that better? That's it, sorted, isn't it? Yep, sorted. Can you hear me still? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry, I turned the volume on Skype all the way down. Okay, we're off now, Chris. So you're in Chicago. Is it warm there or is it cold there at the moment? Have you got snow? Uh, we, yeah, we've got a lot of snow and ice. Uh, oh, we've got right, about a okay. foot of snow. Yeah, I mean, we had that this year in November. When did you go over there, Chris? Uh, went over uh, 13th of January. Um for so, uh, three months. So you got all the snow and ice here as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you, last Monday, right, in Sydney, for the first time ever, I had to get out of the sun because it was too hot. It got to, <laughs> a, it, it was about 110 degrees, th 36 centigrade it was. Wow. Well, it's, a, it's our summertime now because they're on the other side of the planet, aren't they? That's so. right, yeah, yeah. And uh, very nice it is as well there. You know, I'd rather be in the hot than the cold. Yeah, really. that's you know, definitely why I'm going to Vegas at the end of the month. Is it hot there? More. Yeah, it's probably about 20, 25. Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? I quite like yeah. sort of 20, 25. I can go up to 30. After that, it starts getting un uncomfortable. Um, yeah. But it was, it was the sun. The sun is very, very strong there. And um, yeah. certainly on Monday, for the first time ever, it got to about... 2 two thirty in the afternoon and i've been walking around and then i thought i've got to get out of this sun now and i started yeah. wherever i walked i tried to walk in the shade it, it was just just too much <laughs> what are you doing over there you on holiday yeah visiting parents um uh, basically just eating as much as i can for cheap <laughs> oh don't tell me about that that's all i've done on holiday i've got a stomach now <laughs> did i have a stomach last time i saw you i don't think so i've got one now mate <laughs> <laughs> There was um, one of the resorts I stayed in uh, was on a little island, Norfolk Island. Yeah. And this resort was called the Governor's Lodge. <clears throat> and it was like, um, you know, it's not like a, a, a tower block hotel. It's like little rooms dotted around uh, uh, a nice area, you know. Uh, and yeah. every morning, unfortunately, um, every morning a full breakfast was included. Uh, this, right. this, you know, this wasn't like, you know, continental breakfast. You know when you go on these holidays and you have one of those bo really boring continental breakfasts, don't you? Yeah, it's <clears throat> really, really crap. Oh, bit of fruit and a croissant. I mean, where <laughs> did that come from? I, mean, I think that come from France, that one. And it's uh, just awful. No, this wasn't this. What Every breakfast for two weeks, I had cereal with fruit, okay? Three yeah. cups of tea, a full English breakfast with baked beans or whatever sausage bacon and all that business um yeah. f followed by a french toast and <laughs> toast and marmalade oh I mean, are you uh, surprised but yeah, i've only, I've I, only put you on, must have a little bit of a belly <laughs> i know but i've actually only put on two pounds because it was a bit over when i went anyway so we're trying to lose that now but not today because i've been out for my birthday and had a carvery and that's it yeah well the, well the thing is is you also exercise as well though didn't you so even though you ate more you were exercising going around seeing things and that yeah. helps so yeah i did do a lot of walking and um i do a lot of uh cycling and uh swimming here in the uk anyway so probably yeah. by the time you're back it might have gone yeah. but then again it might not have <laughs> <laughs> yeah i come back on uh, march 10th so okay well you're out there a, a little while is it your mum and dad over there or what yeah yeah you doing, you're not doing any work over there or two, well, are you? No, no, you this is a holiday, holiday. Now, didn't you? <laughs> just just yeah. a holiday, is it? 
Yeah, it'd be work when I get back, though, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, I shall Always. speak to you when you get back, then. I shall look forward to that, uh, Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, happy birthday, Chris. Take care. All right, look after yourself. Nice to talk to you, mate. Yeah. All right? All right. Bye-bye now. There we are. Christopher in uh, Chicago. Don't forget, Tom Harris uh, from Chicago is up after the uh, 4 o'clock news straight after me. All right? Now, we were reading a, a couple of emails here. Uh, first of all, yes, Nick, who's uh, in Sydney, Australia, sent this on the 15th of January. Of course, we haven't been here for a while while I've been away. Hello, new listener here, all the way from Sydney, Australia. And uh, I was talking about cricket uh, weeks ago on the last show, and I said, I, I, I don't really understand cricket. I don't understand how people win. You know, when they say, oh, they're 15 for four, out for five, with 33 runs, I, I ain't got a clue what that means. I haven't got a clue. And uh, Nick says, Chris, I know what you mean about cricket, but I have to be careful saying that. As being Australian, I'm liable to be brained by a cricket bat. Oh, they love it, don't they? Aussies love cricket, except when they lose, which, let's be honest, has been a few times recently, hasn't it, Zach? How can you do so badly at the cricket? He says, and if you don't get it and speak up, you are called unpatriotic. Is that right? If you don't get cricket and you're Australian, you're called unpatriotic. What they like, these people. <laughs> but some of the blokes around who like to play amateur cricket aren't bad to look at on a Sunday Arvo. <laughs> Actually, there were some very good looking um, cricket players. Now, who's that bloke? Who was the captain of the English cricket team a while ago? Can't think of his name now. Anyone want to come back to me with that? Because he was quite good looking. Um, and we were also saying, what do you notice in others? What do you look for in others? And Nick says, what I notice in others, I sometimes think men look better from the back. <laughs> I like looking at calves when they are wearing shorts, usually due to our god-awful heat. I have a big thing for the back of necks and also noses. From Nick. Are you a nose... <laughs> I've never heard of that. Nick is a nose person. Well, that's a new one to me. Are you a nose person, are you, Nick? Very strange, very strange. Thank you very much, and welcome to the show, Nick. OK, let's give you the email address again. Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the email. Uh, oh, yes, we've got a... I nearly forgot. I've got a an email on my... Uh, mobile phone here that i must read out i um i've got one of those iphone phone things and um it's got an email on it but um if i take the emails on the phone then it doesn't come on the computer and then i kind of get them lost so i must read this out before before i lose it it's from um susan in dallas of course big news at the moment is that dallas is to return as a new TV series. Did you see that news? Dallas, probably the best thing on television, along with fame in the 1980s. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Fame in the 80s and um, Dallas. All right, uh, Dallas in the 80s as well. Well, it's due to come back. And uh, also starring in the new show will be Patrick Duffy, uh, Larry Hagman and... Um, Sue Ellen. Now, what was her name? Sue Ellen? What was the actress's name? I can't remember. The one who played Sue Ellen. They're going to be in it. Um, but it will be centred around, of course, the two sons, John Ross, who was... Um... Oh, hang on. I forgot now. John Ross and Christopher. Christopher was Bobby Ewing's son. OK, and John Ross was J.R.'s son and that they kind of become Bobby and J.R. in the new series. So very, very much looking forward to that. Uh, they're not started filming yet, so I suppose it won't be till next year. But really, really, really looking forward to the new series of Dallas. If you're of an age that you never saw Dallas, let me tell you, it was the best thing on television in the 80s. And if they're going to bring it back, we've all got high hopes that it will be as good as it was. Um <clears throat> And Susan writes, Hi Chris, this is Susan in Dallas. I've tried to email you several times from work using my iPhone, but for some reason the email always fails to go through. I, I, I can't help you with that one, Susan. I don't know, my darling. I still watch every one of your shows on my phone while I'm at work. I still can't watch your show at... Um, 
while I'm at work. Sorry, I still can't watch your show at home since I only have dial-up service there. It takes hours to download. Why don't you just... You could just download the audio, really, because the, the audio side of things is only about 13 meg. OK, which is a relatively short file these days. So you might want to just uh, download the audio and have a little listen to that. And most people do actually listen to the show rather than watch it. I mean, you know, the amount of people that watch the show is actually very, very small in comparison to the amount of people that listen. In fact, so small sometimes that I was thinking on the holiday, <clears throat> and perhaps you'll give me a bit of feedback on this on the email, anyone who's watching, do we still need to carry on doing the video side of it? As you know, you can either watch or listen to this show, right? It takes quite a long time when I've finished doing the show to take the video, put it together and upload it. That takes a relatively long time. OK, the audio is very quick. Now, being as the fact most people listen rather than watch and, and the, the difference is sort of for every, I would say, for every one person that watches the show, 10 or, let me think, yeah, I would say 20. For every one person that watches the show, 20 listen. So do you think, is it, what, what do you think? Do you, shall I carry on doing the video? If you could let us know that by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Is it worth carrying on doing a video or should I just go to audio only? I'd appreciate your feedback on that, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Anyway, uh, carrying on with Susan here. Um, she says, it takes hours to download as I have only a dial-up service. I'm hoping to purchase a laptop which I can take to work so that I can email you like I used to. But I'm still working a part-time job in the evenings after I leave my full-time job. Sometimes I only get four hours sleep a night. This is why I don't email you when I get home. I'm just too tired. Poor old Susan, dear. You need some rest, my love. Get some rest. Anyway, she says, I worked Monday of this week, but have been let off the rest of the week. We had a terrible ice storm in Dallas area very early Tuesday morning. Now, was it you who sent me um, <clears throat> pictures, I think, of an ice storm somewhere? I seem to remember, it might have been you, and I've, I've seen an ice storm. Uh, those of us in the UK, you will never have seen an ice storm. It's amazing. You know, you get up in the morning and everything is covered in ice, including the cars. And our icicles, they can't even get the doors open, the cars, because they're covered in ice. Amazing. Everything has closed down <clears throat> and traffic is at a standstill. We are not supposed to get above freezing until Saturday. The temperature here has been around 9 degrees Fahrenheit with a high of 22 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's well below freezing. The roads are like skating rinks. The timing was bad since they are having the Super Bowl here in Dallas uh, this weekend, which is already passed now, of course. That is when two top football teams compete for the title. The airport has only one runway open for incoming traffic. Since the Super Bowl is being held here, all the hotel rooms have been booked up for months. People arriving on international and domestic flights at the airport have made it to Dallas, but are unable to fly out since all the planes are grounded. Oh, I bet the hotels are pleased. Eh? That'd keep the money flowing in, wouldn't it? Because, of course, you're forced to stay there. What else can you do? Um, these people, oh, look, here we go. These people have not been able to get hotel rooms and have been sleeping in the airport for days. The runways ice back over as soon as they clear them. We are not prepared for this kind of weather in Dallas. I shouldn't think you are. It's the coldest it's been in about 16 years. So I hope you enjoyed your nice warm vacation. Anyway, now for the good news. And I've already told you this, of course. And something that you may will make you smile. Guess who's coming to Dallas? Larry Hagman, returning to Dallas for its update. Hagman will reprise his role as the villainous oil baron J.R. Ewing. Gray will again play J.R.'s wife, Sue Ellen. Uh, and Duffy returns as his younger brother, Boffy. I mean, this is fantastic. The original Dallas run from 1978 to 1991. Oh, OK. 91. I thought it was... 
I thought it finished in the 80s. 91, 01, 11. Oh, sorry, it's only 20 years ago it finished. Are you sure about that? Is it 20 years ago? Okay. Um, anyway, the original Dallas run from seven, 1978 to 1991 as a pioneering prime time soap on CBS. The new story focuses on the Ewing offspring as they clash over the future of the family dynasty. Josh Henderson and Jordana Brewster also star. Um, let's see. OK, and that's from uh, T TNT, which must be a newspaper or something like that. So thanks very much for that, Sue. And uh, lovely to hear from you, my darling. Really lovely to hear from you. I'm, I'm glad you're still with us, OK? Let's just see if we've got any more uh, uh, emails here on home. Oh, here we are. Um, Crazy Lisa in California. Lisa is with us. Dear Chris, I'm already back online from home. I had been misinformed regarding my internet service and found out I was still in contract. And so, with the help from a nice lady and her supervisor, the internet service is back on and running. And I was promised my $150 early termination fee will be taken off my phone bill as well. Watch well, hope so as well, my love. $150. I'm currently getting caught up on all the missing, uh, on, on the missed United Kingdom talk shows you have on YouTube while you're, uh, while you're, while at your YouTube. I saw a link to a cute looking cat video. Had to share this cat video with you. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so I haven't seen that yet. I'll have a look. I'll have a look for that. Thank you, Lisa. Nice to hear from you, Lisa. And, um, one here. Let's have a look. James, where are we? James. I know that actually I've, I've printed James's email off, so I've got that here somewhere. Um, oh, I thought I had. Where's James's email gone? Did I not print that off somewhere? Let me just check that for you. No, I haven't printed it off. So, oh, hang on. Jim, Jim, that's not Jim. Jim, Jim, James, where are you? James? No, I can't find that. But I know James sent a nice email. James, I may well have... Um, I, I think that hasn't printed off for some reason, so I'm sorry about that. James, do you want to send that back through and I'll read it out for you? OK. Um, Going to say hello to Craig Adams this morning. We're running out of time, aren't we? I can't believe it's four minutes to four. Happy birthday to you. Hope you're having a lovely birthday today. I've sent you an electronic birthday card via your email address. I didn't get that, Craig. No electronic birthday cards here, I'm afraid. I don't know if you want to try that one again. How was your holiday to Australia? I hope it went okay. Thank God you wasn't caught in those floods or cyclones. Yes, and um, well, I'll talk to you more about this on Tuesday because we've had uh, so many messages. Um, we haven't had much time to talk about my holiday. But, um, yes, uh, there was a couple of cyclones uh, that came very close to the island that was staying on. And I'll tell you about those, uh, as I say, uh, on Tuesday or Thursday next week. Um, Craig says his mum's a lot better now since they had a car accident. She's been having physio. Let me just have a bit of my tea here. Oh, that's cold now. Um, she's having physio at her local doctor's. My dad has purchased another Volvo 850R, one of the more rarer Volvos. It cost him enough. I don't know the Volvo cars, really. Um, she's had a five-day holiday last week near Western Supermare. That's a nice part of the country. At one of those bargain holiday places. Few, food, drink, entertainment all included. And the drinks were half price all week. And she and her mum, Lil, my grandma, played bingo. But sadly didn't win. My auntie Carol was also there. I stayed home being with my dad. Boring, to say the least. Don't let your dad hear that. Don't say your dad's boring. Get more involved with your parents, kids. Come on. Our Hinkley um, Carnival is getting the go-ahead for its 50th year, but the new committee, whoever they are, are looking at a new month. September seems to be the most popular month. We used to have it in early June. The new committee, the committee... I, mean, I don't know about these committees, you know. Trouble is, committees, they're always rowing amongst each other. Anyone who's ever been on a committee... Or anything like that, you know, like a residence association. Anything like that. You go to these meetings and they're all rowing all the time with each other. Awful, awful. Um, 
Uh, the new committee will be known this coming Monday evening at a meeting which me and my family have been invited to attend. I do a lot for our Hinkley Carnival and have done for the past five or six years. I just love dressing up in fancy dress. I've got three Star Trek uniforms, the Captain's uniform from the next generation, the movie uniform which Admiral Kirk wore, and the official dinner and the special occasions uniform dress which was used in Star Trek Insurrection and Nemesis. I've got a homemade John Ball outfit and my mum made Britannia. Plus, we've got other homemade fancy dress outfits. Anyway, you take care, uh, Chris, and uh, have a lovely day. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm just sort of trying to do something here while I'm chatting to you. There we are. I found that. Um, so thank you for that, uh, Craig. Nice to hear from you, sir. I, I haven't got any fancy dress outfits. I did have, um, like, a fancy dress um, uh, outfit uh, that I wore oh a long time ago now it was a long time it was a nun's outfit actually and no I haven't got it anymore I'm afraid alright sorry to disappoint you time for me to go boys and girls thank you very much for joining me uh, I'll see you again live here on unitedkingdomradio.co.uk on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock UK time and Thursday morning also at 11 o'clock UK time get the podcast at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk email address if you want to join in chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk .co.uk. Uh, Tom Harris with you after the four o'clock news from Chicago. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye. Now.